The Sonnet by Julia Caroline Dorr, read for LibriVox.org by Danny Hogger. Part 1. To a Critic It is but cunning artifice, you say. To it no throb of nature answereth. It hath no living pulse, no vital breath. This puppet, fashioned in an elder day, through whose straight lips no heart can cry or pray, o deaf and blind of soul these words that saith if that thine ear is dull what hindereth that quicker ears should hear the bugles play and the trump call to battle since the stars first sang together and the exulting skies thrilled to their music earth hath never heard above the tumult of her worldly jars or loftier songs or prayers than those that rise where the high sonnet soareth like a bird part two to a poet thou who wouldst make the sonnet's silver lyre make thine hands clean then as on eagle's wings above the soiling touch of sordid things bid thy soul soar till mounting high and higher it feels the glow of pure celestial fire bathes in clear light and hears the song that rings through heaven's high arches when some angel brings gifts to the throne on wings that never tire it hath a subtle music strangely sweet yet all unmeet for dance or roundelay or idle love that fadeth like a flower it is the voice of hearts that strongly beat the cry of souls that grandly love and pray the trumpet peal that thrills the battle hour end of poem this recording is in the public domain at rest by julia caroline dor read for LibriVox.org by danny hogger when greek meets greek you know he sadly said then comes the tug of war i deem him great and own him wise and good yet adverse fate hath made us enemies if i were dead and buried deep with grave mould on my head i still believe that came he soon or late where i was lying in my last estate my dust would quiver at his lightest tread the slow years passed and one fair summer night when the low sun was reddening all the west i saw two grave mounds where the grass was bright lying so near each other that the crest of the same wave touched each with amber light but ah dear hearts how undisturbed their rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain too wide by julia caroline dor read for librivox .org by newgate novelist o oh, mighty earth thou art too wide too wide too vast thy continents too broad thy seas too far thy prairies stretching fair as these now reddening in the sunset's crimson tide sundered by thee how have thy children cried each to some other until every breeze has borne a burden of fond messages that all unheard in thy lone wastes have died draw closer o oh dear earth thy hills that soar up to blue skies such countless leagues apart bid thou thine awful spaces smaller grow compass thy billows with a narrower shore that yearning lips may meet heart beat to heart and parted souls forget their lonely woe end of poem this recording is in the public domain mercedes by Julia Caroline Dor, read for LibriVox.org by Danny Hogger. O fair young queen, who liest dead today in thy proud palace o'er the moaning sea, with still white hands that never more may be, lifted to pluck life's roses bright with May. Little is it to you that far away, where skies you knew not bend above the free hearts touched with tender pity turn to thee and for thy sake a shadow dims the day but youth and love and womanhood are one though across sundering seas their signals fly young love's pure kiss the joy 
but just begun the hope of motherhood thy people's cry o oh, thou fair child was it not hard to die and leave so much beneath the summer sun end of poem this recording is in the public domain grass grown by julia caroline dor read for LibriVox.org by danny hogger grass grows at last above all graves you say why therein lies the sharpest sting of all to think that stars will rise and dews will fall hills flush with purple splendor soft winds play where roses bloom and violets of may robin to robin in the treetops call and all sweet sights and sounds the senses thrall just as they did before that strange sad day does that bring comfort are we glad to know that our eyes sometime must forget to weep even as june forgets december snow over the graves where our beloved sleep we charge thee time let not the green grass grow nor your relentless mosses coldly creep end of poem this recording is in the public domain. To Zulma by Julia Carolyn Dorr Read for LibriVox.org by Renkotsu 1. Sometimes my heart grows faint with longing, dear, Longing to see thy face, to touch thy hand. But mountains rise between us, Leagues of land stretch on and on, where mighty lakes lie clear in the far spaces, and great forests rear their somber crowns on many a lonely strand. Yet, O oh my fair child, canst thou understand, thou whose dear place was once beside me here, how yet I dare not pray that thou and I may again dwell together as of old. There is a gate between us, locked and barred, over which we may not climb, and standing nigh is the white angel sorrow, who doth hold the only key that may unlock its ward. 2. Yet think not I would have it otherwise. Our God, who knoweth women's hearts, knows best, and every little bird must build its nest, from whence it soareth singing to the skies. What though the one that thou hast builded lies, Where sinks the sun to its enchanted rest, If on each breeze that bloweth east or west, To thee on swiftest wing my spirit flies, We are not far apart, and never shall be, For love, like God, knoweth not time nor space, And it is freer than the viewless air, And well I know, beloved, that if we trod different planets in yon starry space, we should reach out and find each other there. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sleep by Julia Carolyn Dorr. Read for LibriVox.org by Renkotsu. Who calls thee gentle sleep, O oh, rare coquette? Who comest crowned with poppies, thou shouldst wear nettles instead, or thistles in thine hair. For thou art the veriest elf that ever yet made weary mortals sigh and toss and fret. Thou dost float softly through the drowsy air, hovering as if to kiss my lips and share my restless pillow. But ere I can set my arms to clasp thee, without sign or speech, save one swift mocking smile, thou art out of reach. Yet sometime thou, or one as like to thee, as sister is to sister, shalt draw near, with such soft lullabies for my dull ear, that neither life nor love shall waken me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In King's Chapel by Julia Caroline Dor, read for LibriVox.org by Caroline. In King's Chapel, Boston, November 3rd, 1878. O Lord of hosts, how sacred is this place, Where, though the tides of time resistless flow, 
and the long generations come and go thou still abidest in this holy space the very airs are hushed before thy face and wait in reverent calm as voices low blend in the prayers and chantings soft and slow and the grey twilight stealeth on apace hark there are whispers from the time-worn walls the mighty dead glide up the shadowy aisle and there are rustlings as of angels wings while from the choir the heavenly music falls well may we bow in grateful praise the while in the king's chapel reigns the king of kings end of poem this recording is in the public domain Today by Julia Caroline Dorr, read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. What dost thou bring to me, O fair today, that comest o'er the mountains with swift feet? All the young birds make haste thy steps to greet, and all the dewy roses of the May turn red and white with joy. The breezes play on their soft harps a welcome low and sweet all nature hails thee glad thy face to meet and owns thy presence in a brighter ray but my poor soul distrusts thee one as fair as thou art o oh, to-day drew near to me serene and smiling yet she bade me wear the sudden sackcloth of a great despair o oh, pitiless that through the wandering air sent no kind warning of the ill to be End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. F A F by Julia Caroline Dor, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. F A F. When upon eyes long dim, to whom the light of sun and stars had unfamiliar grown eyes that so long in deepening shades had known the mystic visions of the inner sight day broke at last after the weary night i cannot think its sudden glory shone in pitless brightness dazzling clear and white a piercing splendour on the darkness thrown softly as moonlight steals upon the skies softly as shadows creep at a set of sun gently as falls a mother's tender kiss so softly stole the light upon his eyes so slowly passed the shadows one by one so gently dawned the morning of his bliss end of poem this recording is in the public domain day and night by julia caroline dor read for librivox dot org by carolyn day and night one when i awake at morn refreshed renewed glad with the gladness of the jocund day and jubilant with all the birds of may my spirit shrinks from night's dull quietude with it and sleep i have a deadly feud i hear the young winds in the maples play the river singing on its happy way the swallows twittering to their callow brood the fresh fair earth is full of joyous life the tree-tops toss in billowy unrest the very mountain shadows are astir with eager heart i thrill to join the strife doing not dreaming to my soul seems best and i am lordly day's true worshipper two 
but when with days long weariness oppressed with folded hands i watch the sun go down lighting far torches in the steepled town and kindling all the glowing reddening west when every sleepy bird has sought its nest when the long shadows from the hills are thrown and night's soft airs about the world are blown thou heart of mine how sweet it is to rest o israfil thou of the tuneful voice it will be nightfall when thy voice i hear summoning me to slumber soft and low day will be done then will i not rejoice that all my tasks are over and rest is near and like a tired child be glad to go end of poem this recording is in the public domain thy name by julia caroline dor read for librivox dot org by caroline thy name what matters it what men may call thee thou the eternal one who reign'st supreme alone the boundless universe thy mighty throne when souls before thee reverently bow o oh, carest thou what name the lips breathe low jove or osiris or the god unknown to whom the athenians raised their altar stone or thine o holiest unto whom we vow the sun hath many names in many lands yet upon all its golden splendours fall wherever from age to age entreating still the adoring earth uplifts its waiting hands love knows all names and answereth to all who worships thee may call thee what he will end of poem this recording is in the public domain Resurgamus by Julia Caroline Dor, read for LibriVox.org by Caroline. Resurgamus. What though we sleep a thousand leagues apart, I by my mountains, you beside your sea. What though our moss-grown graves divided be? by the wide reaches of a continent's heart when from long slumber we at length shall start weakened to stronger life exultant free this mortal clothed in immortality where shall i find my heaven safe where thou art straight as a bird now hasteth to its nest glad as an eagle soaring to the light swift as the thought that bears my soul to thine when yon lone star hangs trembling in the west so straight so glad so swift to thee my flight led on through farthest space by love divine End of poem this recording is in the public domain at the tomb by julia caroline dor read for librivox dot org by newgate novelist o soul rememberest thou how mary went into the grey dawn to weep beside the tomb where one she loved lay buried through the gloom pallid with pain and with long anguish spent still pressed she on with solemn high intent bearing her costly gifts of rare perfume and spices odorous with eastern bloom unto the master's sepulchre but rent was the great stone from its low door away and when she stooped to peer with startled eyes into the dark where slept the pallid clay lo it was gone 
and there in heavenly guise so grandly calm so fair in morn's first ray she found an angel from the upper skies end of poem this recording is in the public domain Three Days by Julia Caroline Dor, read for LibriVox.org by Caroline. Three Days. One. What shall I bring to lay upon thy bier, O oh, yesterday, thou day forever dead? With what strange garlands shall I crown thy head, thou silent one? For rose and rue are near which thou thyself didst bring me heart's ease clear and dark in purple opulence that shed rare odours round warm wood and herbs that fed my soul with bitterness they all are here when to the banquet i was called by thee thou gavest me rags and royal robes to wear honey and aloes mingled in the cup of costly wine that thou didst pour for me thy throne thy footstool thou didst bid me share on crusts and heavenly manna bade me sup two thou art no dreamer o thou stern to-day the dead past had its dreams the real is thine an armoured knight in panoply divine it is not thine to loiter by the way though all the meads with summer flowers be gay though birds sing for thee and though fair stars shine and every god pours for thee life's best wine nor friend nor foe hath strength to bid thee stay gleaming beneath thy brows with smouldering fire thine eyes look out upon the eternal hills as forth thou ridest with thy spear in rest from the far heights a voice cries come up higher and in swift answer all thy being thrills when lo tis night thy sun is in the west three but thou to-morrow never yet was born in earth's dull atmosphere a thing so fair never yet tripped with footsteps light as air so glad a vision over the hills of morn fresh as the radiant dawning all unworn by lightest touch of sorrow or of care thou dost the glory of the morning share by snowy wings of hope and faith upborne o oh, fair to-morrow what our souls have missed art thou not keeping for us somewhere still the buds of promise that have never blown the tender lips that we have never kissed the song whose high sweet strain eludes our skill the one white pearl that life hath never known End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Darkness by Julia Caroline Dor, read for LibriVox.org by Vida. Come, blessed darkness, come, and bring thy balm, for eyes grown weary of the garish day. Come with thy soft, slow steps, thy garments gray thy veiling shadows bearing in thy palm the poppy seeds of slumber deep and calm come with thy patient stars whose far-off ray steals the hot fever of the soul away thy stillness sweeter than a chanted psalm o oh, blessed darkness day indeed is fair and light is dear when summer days are long and one by one the harvesters go by but so is rest sweet and surcease from care and folded palms and hush of evensong and all the unfathomed silence 
of the sky. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Silence by Julia Caroline Dorr. Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist. O golden silence, bid our souls be still and on the foolish fretting of our care lay thy soft touch of healing unaware once for a half hour even in heaven the thrill of the clear harping ceased the air to fill with soft reverberations thou wert there and all the shining seraphs owned thee fair a white hushed presence on the heavenly hill bring us thy peace o silence song is sweet tuneful is baby laughter and the low murmur of dying winds among the trees and dear the music of love's hurrying feet yet only he who knows thee learns to know the secret soul of loftiest harmonies end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sanctified by Julia Caroline Dorr, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. Sanctified. A holy presence hath been here, and lo, the place is sanctified. From off thy feet put thou thy shoes, my soul. The air is sweet, even yet with heavenly odours and i know if thou dost listen thou wilt hear the flow of most celestial music and the beat of rhythmic pinions it is then most meet that thou shouldst watch and wait lest to and fro should pass the heavenly messengers and thou haply shouldst miss their coming o oh, my soul count this fair room a temple from whose shrine led by an angel though we know not how thy friend and lover dropped the cup of dole and passed from thy love to the love divine end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Message by Julia Caroline Dorr Read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Soleri I bid thee sing the song I would have sung, The high, pure strain that since my soul was born, Clearer and sweeter than the bells of morn, Through all its chambers hath divinely rung. In thee let my whole being find a tongue, Pluck thou the rose where I have plucked the thorn, Nor leave the perfect flower to fade forlorn. Youth holds the world in fee, and thou art young. O oh, my glad singer of the tuneful voice, Where my wing falters be thou strong to soar, Striking the deep, clear notes beyond my reach, Beyond the plummet of a woman's speech. Sing my songs for me, and from some far shore, my happy soul shall hear thee and rejoice. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When Lesser Loves by Julia Caroline Dorr. Read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Soleri. When Lesser Loves by the Relentless Flow of mighty currents from my arms were torn and swept unheeding to that silent bourne whose mystic shades no living man may know by night by day i sang my songs and so out of the sackcloth that my soul had worn weaving my purple i forgot to mourn pouring my grief out in melodious woe now i am dumb dear heart my lips are mute Yet if from yonder blue height thou dost lean, 
earthward remembering love's last wordless kiss. Know thou no trembling thrills of harp or lute, dying soft wails and tender songs between, were half so voiceful as this silence is. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. George Eliot by Julia Caroline Dorr Read for LibriVox.org by Newgate Novelist Pass on, O world, and leave her to her rest. Brothers, be silent while the drifting snow weaves its white pall above her, lying low with empty hands crossed idly on her breast. O sisters, let her sleep well unrepressed your pitying tears fall silently and slow washing her spotless in their crystal flow of that one stain whereof she stands confessed are we so pure that we should scoff at her or mock her now low lying in her tomb god knows how sharp the thorn her roses wore even what time their petals were astir in the warm sunshine odorous with perfume leave her to him who weighed the cross she bore End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Knowing by Julia Caroline Dorr, read for LibriVox.org by Caroline. Knowing. One summer day, to a young child I said, "Write to thy mother, boy," with earnest face and labouring fingers all unused to trace the mystic characters he bent his head that should have danced amid the flowers instead over the blurred page for a half-hour's space then with a sigh that burdened all the place cried mamma knows and out to sunshine sped o oh, soul of mine when tasks are hard and long and life so crowds thee with its stress and strain that thou half fainting art too tired to pray drink thou this wine of blessing and be strong god knows what though the lips be dumb with pain or the pen drops he knows what thou wouldst say end of poem this recording is in the public domain a thought by julia caroline dorr read for librivox dot org by caroline a thought suggested by reading a miracle in stone o oh, thou supreme all the wise eternal one thou who art lord of lords and king of kings in whose high praise each flaming seraph sings thou at whose word the morning stars begun with songs and shout their glorious course to run thou unto whom the great sea lifts its wings and earth with laden hands rich tribute brings from every shore that smiles beneath the sun thou who didst write thy name upon the hills and bid the mountains speak for thee all away yet gave sweet messages to murmuring rills and to each flower that breathes its life away oh dost thou smile or frown when man's conceit seeks in this pile of stone the impress of thy feet end of poem this recording is in the public domain tomorrow by julia caroline dorr Read for LibriVox.org by Caroline. Tomorrow. One. 
mysterious one inscrutable unknown a silent presence with averted face whose lineaments no mortal eye can trace and robes of trailing darkness around thee thrown over the midnight hills thou comest alone what thou dost bring to me from farthest space what blessing or what ban what dole what grace i may not know thy secrets are thine own yet asking not for lightest word or sign to tell me what the hidden fate may be without a murmur or a quickened breath unshrinkingly i place my hand in thine and through the shadowy depths go forth with thee to meet as thou shalt lead or life or death two then if i fear not thee thou veiled one whose face i know not why fear i to meet beyond the everlasting hills her feet who cometh when all yesterdays are done shall i who have proved thee good thy sister shun o thou to-morrow who dost feel the beat of life's long rhythmic pulses strong and sweet in the far realm that hath no need of sun thou who art fairer than the fair to-day that i have held so dear and loved so much when slow descending from the hills divine thou summonest me to join thee on thy way let me not shrink nor tremble at thy touch nor fear to break thy bread and drink thy wine end of poem this recording is in the public domain o earth art thou not weary by julia caroline dor read for librivox dot org by Sarah Soleri. O earth, art thou not weary of thy graves? Dear, patient mother earth upon thy breast, how are they heaped from farthest east to west? From the dim north where the wild storm wind raves, o'er the cold surge that chills the shore it laves, to sunlit isles by softest seas caressed, where roses bloom alway and songbirds nest, how thick they lie, like flecks upon the waves. There is no mountain top so far and high, no desert so remote, no vale so deep, no spot by man so long untenanted, but the pale moon slow marching up the sky sees over some lone grave the shadows creep. O oh, earth! Art thou not weary of thy dead? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Alexander by Julia Caroline Dorr Read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn Alexander There was a man whom all men called the Great low lying on his death-bed we are told he bade his courtiers when he should be cold breathless and silent in his last estate and they who were to bury him should wait outside the palace that no sere cloths fold or winding-sheet should round his hands be rolled those helpless hands that once had ruled the state thus spake he on the black pall let them lie empty and lorn that all the world may see how of his riches was nothing left to alexander when he came to die lord of two worlds 
as treasureless was he as any beggar of his crust bereft end of poem this recording is in the public domain the place by julia caroline dor read for librivox dot org by caroline the place i go to prepare a place for you one o oh, holy place we know not where thou art though one by one our well-beloved dead from our close claspings to thy bliss have fled they send no word back to the breaking heart and if perchance their angels fly athwart the silent reaches of the abyss white spread the swift white wings we see not but instead only the dark void keeping us apart where did he set thee o thou holy place made he a new world in the heavens high hung so far from this poor earth that even yet its first glad rays have traversed not the space that lies between us nor their glory flung on the old home its sons can never forget two but what if on some fair auspicious night like that on which the shepherds watched of old down from far skies in burning splendour rolled shall stream the radiance of a star more bright than ever yet hath shone on mortal sight swift shafts of light like javelins of gold wave after wave of glory manifold from zone to zenith flooding all the height and what if moved by some strange inner sense some instinct than pure reason wiser far some swift clairvoyance that annulleth space all men shall cry with sudden joy intense behold behold this new resplendent star our heaven at last revealed the place the place three then shall the heavenly host with one accord veil their bright faces in obeisance meet while swift they haste the glorious one to greet then shall orion own at last his lord and from his belt unloose the blazing sword while pale proud ashtaroth with footsteps fleet her jewelled crown drops humbly at his feet and lyra strikes her harp's most rapturous chord o earth bid all your lonely isles rejoice break into singing all ye silent hills and ye tumultuous seas make quick reply let the remotest desert find a voice the whole creation to its centre thrills for the new light of heaven is in the sky end of poem this recording is in the public domain to a goddess by julia carolyn dor read for librivox dot org by Rinkotsu. lift up thy torch o goddess grand and fair let its light stream across the waiting seas as banners float upon the yielding breeze in the king's tent his presence to declare and as his heralds haste to do their share shouting his praise and sounding his decrees so let the waves in loftiest symphonies proclaim thy glory to the listening air thou star-crowned one the nations watch for thee 
For thee the patient earth has waited long. To thee her toiling millions stretch their hands from the far hills and o'er the rolling sea. Lift up thy torch, O beautiful and strong, a beacon light to earth's remotest lands. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O W H by Julia Carolyn Dorr. Read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross. How shall I crown this child? Fair summer cried. May wasted all her violets long ago. No longer on the hills June's roses glow. Flushing with tender bloom the pastures wide, my stately lilies one by one have died. The clematis is but a ghost, and lo, in the fair meadow lands no daisies blow. How shall I crown this summer child? She sighed, then quickly smiled. For him, for him, she said, on every hill my golden rod shall flame token of all my prescient soul foretells his shall be golden song and golden fame long golden years with love and honor wed and crowns at last of silver immortelles end of poem this recording is in the public domain gifts for the king by julia carolyn dorr Read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross. What good gifts can we bring to thee, O King? O royal poet, on this day of days? No golden crown, for thou art crowned with bays. No jeweled scepter and no signet ring, or distant realms far flashing rays to fling. For well we know thy beckoning finger sways. A mightier empire and the world obeys. No lute, for thou hast only need to sing. No rare perfumes, for thy pure life makes sweet. The air about thee, even as when the rose, Swings its bright censer down the garden path. Love drops its fragrant lilies at thy feet. Fame breathes thy name to each sweet wind that blows. What can we bring to him who all things hath? End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Recognition by Julia Caroline Dorr Read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn Recognition H. W. L. 1. Who was the first to bid thee glad all hail, O friend and master, who with winked feet over the heavenly hills flew fast and fleet to bring thee welcome from beyond the vale the mighty bards of old thy dante pale with high thoughts even yet virgil the sweet old homer trumpet-tongued and chaucer meet to clasp thy stainless hand what nightingale of all that sing in heaven sang the first to thee through all the hallelujahs didst thou hear spencer still pouring his melodious lays majestic milton's clarion strong and free or golden link between the far and near bryant's clear chanting of the eternal days two nay but not these not these even though apace long rank on rank with swift yet stately tread they came to meet thee the immortal dead yet love ran faster all the lovely place all the wide luminous enchanted space glistened with shining ones who thither sped the countless host thy song had comforted what light what love illumined each radiant face the rachels thou hadst sung to in the dark the davids who for absaloms had wept 
the fainting ones who drank thy balm and wine high souls that soared with thee as soars the lark children who named thee smiling ere they slept these gave thee first the heavenly countersign end of poem this recording is in the public domain shakespeare by julia caroline dorr read for LibriVox.org by sarah Soleri. nay master dare we speak o mighty shade sitting enthroned where awful splendors are beyond the light of sun or moon or star how shall we breathe thy high name undismayed poet in royal majesty arrayed walking with mute gods through the realms afar, seer, whose wide vision time nor death can bar, we would but kiss thy feet, abashed, afraid. But yet we love thee, and great love is bold. Love, O oh, our master, with his heart of flame and eye of fire, dares even to look on thee, for whom the ages lift their gates of gold and his glad tongue shall syllable thy name till time is lost in god's unsounded sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain to e c s by julia caroline dor read for librivox dot org by caroline to e c s with a rose from conway castle on hoary conway's battlemented height o poet heart i pluck for thee a rose through arch and court the sweet wind wandering goes round each high tower the rooks in airy flight circle and wheel all bathed in amber light low at my feet the winding river flows valley and town entranced in deep repose war doth no more appal nor foes affright thou knowest how softly on the castle walls where mosses creep and ivies far and free fling forth their pennants to the freshening breeze like god's own benison this sunshine falls therefore o oh friend across the sundering seas fair conway sends this sweet wild rose to thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Christmas Sonnet by Julia Caroline Dorr. Read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Soleri. I wake at midnight from a slumber deep. Hark, are the clear stars singing, sweet and low, as from far skies floats music's liquid flow, waking earth's happy children from their sleep. Now, from the bells a myriad voices leap, and all the brazen lilies are aglow with rapturous heartbeats swinging to and fro. As the glad chimes their rhythmic pulsing keep, O soul of mine, join thou the high refrain that rings from shore to shore, from sea to sea, like song of birds that do but soar and sing. O heart of mine, what room hast thou for pain? With love and joy make holy symphony and keep today the birthday of thy king. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Poverty by Julia Caroline Dorr, read for LibriVox.org by Vita. Poverty, the city woke down the long market-place her sad eyes wandered 
but no tears they shed in her bare home a little child lay dead yet she was here with white impassive face and hands that had no beauty and no grace selling her small wares for a bit of bread since they who live must eat though sore besed what time had she to weep what breathing space for even in words she had no fitting phrase wherein to tell the story of her dole but stood like niobe a thing of stone or mutely went on her accustomed ways or counted her small gains while her stum soul shut in with grief could only make its moan end of poem this recording is in the public domain Surprises by Julia Caroline Dorr, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. Surprises. One. O Earth that had so long in darkness lain, waiting and listening for the voice that cried, "Let there be light," on thy first eventide what woe what fear wrung thy dumb soul with pain in darkling space down dropped the red sun slain with all his banners drooping far and wide spread desolation's vast and blackening tide how couldst thou know that day would dawn again but the long hours wore on till lo pale gleams of faint far glory lit the eastern skies broadening and reddening till the sun's full beams broke in clear golden splendour on thine eyes darkness and brooding anguish were but dreams lost in a trembling wonder of surprise two even so o life all tremulous with woe thou too didst cower when without sound or jar from the high zenith sinking fast and far thy sun went out of heaven how couldst thou know in that dark hour that never tide could flow so ebon black nor ever mountain bar breast night so deep without or moon or star but that the morning yet again must glow god never leaves thee in relentless dark slowly the dawn of unbelieving eyes breaketh at last day brightens and o oh, hark a flood of bird song from the tender skies from storm and darkness thou hast found an ark shut in with this great marvel of surprise end of poem this recording is in the public domain C H R by Julia Caroline Dorr, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. C H R lost off Hai Mun in the China Sea. In what wide wonderland, or near or far, press on today thy swift adventurous feet? thou who wert wont the orient skies to greet with song and laughter and to climb the bar of mountain ranges where the cloud gods are with brave glad steps as eager and as fleet as young lovers who on errant sweet seeks the one face that is his guiding star the far blue seas engulfed thee o oh, my brother but could not quench thy spirit's lofty fire nor daunt the soul that knew not how to quell earth quest thou didst but barter for another where alps on alps before thee still aspire 
and where in god's name thou shalt yet prevail end of poem this recording is in the public domain a new beatitude by julia caroline dor read for librivox dot org by caroline a new beatitude l g w a new beatitude i write for thee blessed are they who are not sure of things nor strive to mount on feeble finite wings to heights where god's strong angels soaring free halt and are silent ah the mystery to-day o oh friend beyond earth's reckonings of time and space beyond its jars and strings thou enterest where the new eternal secrets be ay thou art sure to-day no more the bars of earth's poor limitations hold thee back setting their bounds to thine advancing feet soar lofty soul beyond the farthest stars where hope nor yearning ever shall suffer lack nor knowledge fail to any that entreat end of poem this recording is in the public domain compensation by julia caroline dor read for librivox dot org by sarah Soleri. part one life of my life do you remember how at our fair pleasant gate a stately tree kept silent watch and ward majestic free its head reached heaven while its lowest bough swept the green turf and all between was row on row of crested waves a sleeping sea or heaving billows tossed tumultuously when the fierce winds that smote the mountain's brow lashed it to sudden passion it was old storm rocked for many centuries it had grown one with the hills the river and the sod yet young it was with largest of red gold for every autumn and from stores unknown bringing each springtime treasure trove to god part two then came a night of terror and dismay uproar and lightning with the furious sweep of mighty winds that raged from steep to steep and ere it passed the great tree prostrate lay sleepless i mourned until the morning gray then forth i crept as one who goes to keep watch by his dead too heart-sick even to weep and hardly daring to behold the day lo what vast splendor met my startled eyes what unimagined space what vision wide turrets and domes now blue now softest green in one unbroken circuit kissed the skies while veiled in soft clouds radiant as a bride shone one far sapphire peak till then unseen end of poem this recording is in the public domain questionings by julia caroline dor read for LibriVox.org by sarah Soleri. forth from earth's council thou hast passed o friend to those high circles where god's angels are angels that need no light of sun or star no eye may follow thee as thou dost wind thy lofty way where heaven's pure heights ascend above the reach of earthly fret or jar where no rude touch the blissful peace can mar where all harsh sounds in one soft concord blend what have ye seen o beauty loving eyes what have ye heard O ears attuned to hear and to interpret heaven's high harmonies? 
What problems hast thou solved, thou who with clear, undaunted gaze didst search the farthest skies? And dost thou still love on, O heart most dear? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Remembrance by Julia Caroline Dorr Read for LibriVox.org by Domenica Campbell I do remind me how, when by a beer I looked my last on an unanswering face, Serenely waiting for the grave's embrace. One who would fain have comforted said, Dear, this is the worst, life's bitterest drop is here impartial fate has done you this one grace that till you go to your appointed place or soon or late there is no more to fear it was not true my soul it was not true thou art not lost while i remember thee lover and friend i cry with bated breath what if the years slow creeping like the blue resistless tide should blot that face from me not to remember would be worse than death end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the high tower by julia carolyn dor read for LibriVox.org by sky albatross safe in the high tower of thy love i wait secure and still whatever winds may blow although no more thy banners bending low salute me from afar when all elate i haste to meet thee at the postern gate no more i hear thy trumpet's eager flow through the far listening silence come and go to greet me where i bide in lonely state thy king hath sent thee on some high emprise some lofty embassage some noble quest to a strange land whence cometh sound nor sign yet evermore i lift my tranquil eyes knowing that love but do it love's behest afar or near my dear lord still is mine end of poem this recording is in the public domain End of the Sonnets by Julia